you all are muted on entry, so if you do have a question, please raise your hands or also come to the chat window to put any comments. Um, this meeting is being recorded um, and will be published on Rival later on. And this is an interactive call, though I have a presentation. I'll be using that presentation to really drive the conversation. <clears throat> it's not about me presenting and you asking this question in the end. So at any point, if you have any question, please raise your hand or put your comments in the chat window and I'll pick them up as I go along. The presentation is already published on Driver where the meeting invite is if you want to look at the slides um, as I'm going through them. So the agenda is I'm going to start with Intro to the News 2. We're going to look at high-level use cases and I'll provide you an example and use to use case. We'll look at a bit of background and curation if this is the first time you're joining this call. And then we'll start looking at uh, high level decision, design decisions we had made and observations and vital signs for UK, uh, followed by invites for first type sites and vendors and your questions. And we'll finish with any other business. So this agenda is a draft agenda. If any of you have got any comments or want to include items in any other business, uh, please feel free to write them in the chat window and we'll pick them up in the end of the meeting. So brief overview for news two. <clears throat> news has evolved from National Early Warning Score, which is news which was published by Royal College of Physicians in 2012. It only applies to adult patients, patients over aged eight, age 16, and it doesn't apply to children and pregnant women. It was uh, initially developed to improve the detection and response to clinical deterioration of patients of acute illness. Um, it's used for initial assessment and monitoring of patients in mostly hospital settings, but increasingly it's also recommended in pre-hospital settings like ambulance, uh, before the patient is brought in to hospital. Uh, according to the last survey from RCP, 90% um, of NHS hospital are using some form of early warning score, and 75% are, are already using news. Um, as you can see from the screen, um, it has got six simple physiological parameters, respiration rate, oxygen saturation, systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, level of consciousness, and temperature. This is how what news to looks like. <clears throat> uh, on top, you've got some scores. On the left, you've got the parameters I talked about, which, um, which, which are, as I said, respiration rate and systolic blood pressure, pulse, consciousness, temperature. Um, there are a few changes from news, if you're already familiar with news. One is the addition of SPO to scale one and two, which you can see in the row. And they are both not used at a given time, only one of them is used. And SPO to scale two is recommended to be used in patients with hypercapnic respiratory failure, mostly in cases of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. But the other cases, patient might be in hypercapnic respiratory failure. But the clinician has to make a decision whether they're going to use SPO to scale one or scale two for a given patient and use the reference ranges provided. And the other change from news is they have added new confusion. If you look at the consciousness, there is alert, which is a 0, 0.0, and then you get CVP, the C, which stands for new confusion. The standard scale before that was AVPU, which included being the patient being alert or responding to verbal or pain or unresponsive. And you get a score of three for new confusion. By adding new, confu new confusion, they have aligned it to sepsis. Now news two can be used to identify sepsis. A news two score of five and above um, is, is a, is a, creates a risk for patient beyond on sepsis and it covers a, all the indicators of the existing sepsis tool, which has got respiratory rate, blood pressure, and new confusion. There are other changes in the tooling, which include is the, the way colors, color, colors are shown, and they are quite visual, and the order of um, all the parameters. I would recommend you look at the RCP report. Um, what I'm highlighting is what we found was relevant to our design in FHIR, 
So these are the key changes we had to take into account while designing. <clears throat> so the scope of NEWS 2 is defined by a new work commission, which we received from NCS England, which is in the meeting in light, which looks at the curation of NEWS 2 observation and information models based on existing work. PRSB has already, the professional request standards body has already done some work on observations as part of maternity, and there's existing work available from Open EHR observations as well. Uh, as part of this work, we will be creating level two and level three profiles. I will go into the definition of these um, in a minute when we come to the bit of background on Care Connect. And, and the, finally, the delivery of Fire SDU3 Alpha specification with implementation guidance in Snow and CT codes for the parameter observations which are included. Uh, the alpha here means there's a link here, you can follow it to take us and it's a digital policy statement on alpha, uh, which is a initial test uh, specification which is subject to change. What is out of scope is that we are not going to do detailed information models for individual parameters like blood pressure. So the blood pressure might have just systolic and diastolic. It's not going to have all possible nodes like the line position uh, or um, the cuff size. So th these are going to be um, quite basic set of uh, parameter observations. And we are not going to do any more clinical assurance on that because the basic observations are already assured by the PRSP as part of the existing use cases. So once we got the new work commission, we have been discussing as internally with NHS Digital with the code team that what are the possible use cases for sharing of news to, uh, which is different from implementing news to, which might be replacing a news template and a news to with the EPR. But once a news to is recorded, what, what are the use cases for sharing the total score or the subscores or individual observations. Most of our work is based on the first use case, which is a sharing of news to from an APR to a third party application, which might do a clinician alert or onward workflow. So I've got a slide which is going to talk about a bit more about this use case. Other use cases we have is ambulance to emergency departments. Again, that's a separate New Work Commission, and we'll be considering that as part of that New Work Commission, that how news to fits into overall workflow of ambulance staff doing a handover to emergency department, and the final is transfer patient between hospitals, for which at the moment we have not New Work Commission, but I think our view is that this is best considered as the overall holistic use case and news to how it fits into it. So this is the news case for sharing from sharing news to from APR. So the user story, and again, this is a presumed use case. We actually don't have a real use case given to us. And what I'm keen to hear from people who are attending this call is, first of all, their view on this use case, how realistic it is. But also, if you have any real use case on the ground for news to sharing, what kind of workflow would you envisage? And if you could share that with us on the call after I finish the use cases, because I'm going to stop off the use cases to come back to the attendees to say if you have any use cases that you would like to uh, for us to look into. So this use case is as a clinician, I can share the news to total score, parameters, and subscores and values. So the third party application could integrate into the application and use to drive onward workflow to for clinician, uh, clinician's alert or decision support. So the current process, we are aware that it is recorded in clinical system or news, if not news to, but uh, we're not aware how it is shared for any onward workflow. So back to the patient and the clinicians. And I think the important bit for a clinician is we are assuming the clinician who is completing the news to is competent enough to, um, to understand the difference between SPO2 scale one or SPO2 scale two. They themselves know what hyper hypercapnia is. So they are going to make that decision to use which scale to use and put a subscore for that based on the oxygen saturation. We're not expecting they will be receiving any external decision support to make that decision. The sending system will be the sending system which is where the news to is recorded and the third party application which is receiving it. So the main flow is patient is presenting at the hospital. The clinician records the patient observation for news to in the clinical system. The clinical system calculates the total score based on subscores entered by clinician. 
So one alternative part is that uh, the system actually calculates the subscores based on actual observation record by clinician. So that's a possibility as well. Um, the, clinic, the clinical system sends the total score to the third party application and third party application integrates it for onward workflow. And exceptions are it might not be, the third party application might not be available. So before I come to you for your comments on the use case, I just want to quickly finish the clinical scenario. Um, the clinical scenario is that Mr. Smith is a 50 year old male who attends the emergency department with fever, cough, and pleuritic pain with falling vitals. They've got respiration rate of 21 beats per minute, um, uh, 21 per minute, oxygen saturation of 93%. They are on air, not on oxygen, systolic blood pressure 120, heart rate is 95 per minute, and consciousness, they are alert, they're not confused, and temperature is 37.5. Now, that's what it looks like in the news too. So respiration rate is 21. You go to the chart of the value 21 and 24. That's a score of two. Oxygen saturation, we are using SpO2 scale one is 93%. And you go to 93%, which is a 92 to 93, you get a score of two. Is patient air on oxygen? Patient's on air. You go there and on air is a score of zero. On oxygen is a score of zero and risk is zero. And systolic blood pressure on 20, which is normal, which is go to 1 to 219 range, which is zero. And then you've got a pulse, which is 95. In this case, 91 to 110, you get a score of one. And consciousness alert, which is zero, and everything else is three. And temperature is 38.5 in this case. And then you get a score of one with a total new score of six. So that's the way scoring works. Uh, all you need to know is which scale to use in oxygen saturation, and then you go through the chart, and that's enough information to calculate the score and subscores. Um, so I think I'm going to stop here to get some feedback on the use case itself and what other use cases people think they have uh, on the ground for news to sharing. Any anybody who's who would like to share any use cases they they might you already have. I'm going to sit Ben here from Orion. Hello, Anne. Hi. The use case that you've outlined, um, we have clients already working with. Um, mm -hmm. um, however, the observations come directly off the medical device that's on wheels and taken from bed to bed around the ward. So it's not the clinician inputting the data, it's the medical device inputting the data and then sending that directly to our system to be presented in the EPR. Okay, so you're saying the clinicians record the raw observations and then they get news to score after that? No, or news score? No, the clinician takes the device, wheels the device to the bedside, attaches mm -hmm. the blood pressure cuff to the patient, and they don't actually transcribe anything. The machine takes the vital signs directly. Um, Obviously, they would have to do the temperature manually, um, but the ones that come off the device are automated. So actually, the device and the software within that device is all um, one integrated unit, and what we get outputted is the observations and the score already calculated. Okay, so you've got device integration with the blood pressure machine. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, John? Yeah. One of the challenges with News 2 is, um, interestingly, uh, uh, ironically, it's slightly a step backwards because um, it, it sort of uh, discourages automation to some degree because there are a couple of key things that need um, human decision. So the um, state of confusion is now very much down to the clinician again to um, uh, make that decision. and and uh, potentially the decision on which uh, oxygen scale, um, whether it's a, uh, sort of type two respiratory failure, therefore on that sort of scale two um, decision needs to be made too. So it does um, it does add a level of complexity in that you do need to kind of have those human recorded um, inputs in, in addition to the um, automated device input too. Yeah, I think we, we discussed that. There are 
use cases, and I think Mike is on the call, uh, who's, who was a CCI at Liverpool, that some clinicians actually are not competent to make that decision. So that creates a situation that they actually need some kind of um, on-the-fly support. Um, but I think that's a very compli complicated use case where they are sending base observation and they don't know where which skills to use. Yeah, I think that that is going to become a, a more broader training issue for the NHS in that um, that, that that reliance on HTAs today, um, who uh, might not be competent to um, understand the difference between a sort of scale one, and scale two, and um, also um, not so confidently make a decision around confusion, that 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 will have to be addressed by the NHS, and um, and the way to address that will be training, but that does. Uh, agree that does present a, a challenge for a number of our, our sort of uh, customer organisations. Okay, thanks. I got Mike. Mike, do you want to come in? Uh, yeah, I think um, uh, it's Mike Fisher here, CCIO from Liverpool. Um, that's absolutely true, of course. That the 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 news two score is is less automatable because of the um, things that you know you've just discussed, but. Having said that, although um, that's a downside from an automation point of view, there's no doubt that from a clinical point of view, con confu new confusion in, in, a, in a person is a very ominous sign and should be, you know, should quite properly be uh, taken account of in any meaningful score that's going to try and reflect the, cl the clinical state of that person. Um, I think confusion is difficult enough. I think we had a lot of discussion about this and it is true that the decision as to whether to use um, scale one or scale two uh, is is even more complex, which is why at the moment the thing is in there that we've just for the time being, we haven't attempted to solve that problem from a computational point of view. We've just said that um, that it's going to be the responsibility of the people who are originating the score to um, make a correct decision as to whether the person should be assessed on scale one or scale two. But that being the case, and also the thing that the previous uh, person from Orion brought up about um, uh, device integration, all of that is absolutely true, but it doesn't impact, of course, on the structures for sharing the new score once it's actually been derived, which is actually what this fire specification is all about. Okay, thanks, Mike. Pranita? Sorry, I just, I just missed that. Oh, it's it's Pranita Mishra. Your hand is up. I, I don't know whether you call a user because there are a lot of calling users. I'll, I'll unmute them all. Pranita, can you hear yes. us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can you can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so yeah, I, I think Mike has replied to my um, uh, question. It's just uh, on scale two, because what we got as a feedback, um, I'm from uh, DXC, um, that uh, healthcare workers generally, uh, you know, take the uh, recordings in in patients uh, for patients, and uh, is there, would there be a huge case? Uh, where a scale two needs to be used um, come from a uh, from a qualified clinician, or how are we going to implement that kind of uh, use case? That is what I wanted to know. But I think uh, what Mike uh, said that it is still not yet decided. So we will just go with um, that. Uh, they have the the. the the people who are recording the data are competent competent enough to take scale two. So. Um, yeah, thanks. So I think we have, we have had that discussion uh, covering the scope of um, having some kind of decision support by a third-party server where some expert clinician responds to it will actually create a couple of interactions. It's not a single call. Um, and I think that will create different type of spec about kind of query sent and kind of response you get. And, and I think that will be different design for a different use case. Uh, but for the current use case, which is we are assuming is a quite a straightforward spec to send scores and subscores and observations. 
Okay, yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, Mark? Hello, Mark, you want to come in? Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we can. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, just say I'm, I'm um, a technical person rather than a clinical person, um, but the decision in, in, in NHS Wales, so I I'm, uh, represent NHS Wales Informatics Service, the, decision in, the clinical decision in Wales is not to use automated uh, recording of, of, of news scores. We're, we're, we're involved in a nursing project to record news rather than news too. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of crossover. Um, the kind of use cases um, we're seeing though is, is the ability to, for instance, if we have an application that displays a list of patients on a ward, to be able to display the latest news score for those patients um, on, on, that, on that list. So we want to see that you know, the, the, the latest news value as well as being able to graph the individual scores, um, you know, the temperature, the respiratory rate and so on. Um, so, so the focus on our, our, our work so far has really been around the, um, the how we structure um, the new score that our resource or our resource is um, so that we have one um, new score observation and um, which contains the, 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 the six or seven nested um, Parameter um, has as has observations in so we can see that you know, graphing of, of the uh, temperature if, if, if we wanted to. Um, so our focus really has been around that structure. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that you 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 said you know the focus be on sort of basic observations. Um, that's the route we've chosen. Um, um, we, okay. are, we are we are choosing um, we are doing diastolic and and systolic in blood pressure as well. Okay, sounds good. We're doing similar stuff. So we're going to cover a lot, lot more of how the individual parameters are going to be uh, captured or related to the news to score uh, in, in coming slides. Um, okay, so anybody else? Pranita, your hand is still up, and Mark, your hand is still up. If people could put their hand down once they're finished, um, so that I know for future. Okay, so we'll move on. Let me close that window. Okay. So this is a bit of a background of curation. If this is the first call you had joined, um, this the fight curation again has been ha happening under interopen umbrella and Amir who's on the call started it. I took over in November twenty seventeen and we we implemented a new process to and, and we did curation for transfer of care, which is all the specs of beta specs are published now. The same with GP Connect, and we also cover reasonable adjustments in pharmacy. Um, and most of the work we are doing, we are trying to improve as we go along. So in, in this situation of curation, we're looking to include first the type side. So that's the reason Mike Fisher, who's uh, as a CCI of Liverpool, was part of our core team. Go team is uh, individuals within NHS Digital, including terminologists and technical modelers and clinicians, but also PRSP clinicians and clinical informaticians and also clinical safety who actually prepare the pack you're looking at. And they work in the background, but we do want to have more suppliers engagement in the core team as well, if especially suppliers who want to actively implement the SPAC as soon as we publish it. Uh, I briefly talked about Care Connect levels. There is a hyperlink which takes you to a lot of detail if you're interested in the definitions, but in principle, level one, is SDU3, which is um, started in trial use three of FIRE, baseline international resource, which is published at actual seven international website. Level two is the UK localization of level one, which implies that we try to use as much of level one as possible and with as minimal changes as possible, but there are times we have to make changes for UK localization, for, for example, adding NHS number, or Snowmet CT, which, uh, which is not their international base. Level three is UK specific, uh, use case specific it's for transfer of care. In this case, the, the use case is news two, so we'll have a level three for news two, and that allows us to make very specific changes for those news two, like making certain fields mandatory, which will not apply to level two. We also have a concept of a level two extension library, which means we can add additional elements to level twos, but they are reusable across different use cases in a library. 
So coming to the news to itself, um, let me go through the high level approach. What we have used is observation resource. Fire has got a number of uh, resources within it, including condition and procedures. We feel the observation resource is the best fit for news to. So in, as you can see, observation resource in this picture has got a code element which will carry a SNOMAD CT code for news to total score and the value um, will uh, the value will carry the total score. There's also a category element and if you go to the to the link of category there are a few categories suggested by Fire International. We have looked at the definition and we feel survey which comes closer to assessment tool is the category we are recommending to use in this case. So I'm going to go through these things, and if any of you have got any comments, please raise hands if you if you disagree, if you think we, we should be doing it differently, but um, I'll stop at some point to get further comments. Now, when it came to individual parameters when used to, there was a number of ways we could model it. We could use observation.component, which is part of observation resource and which gives you a code and value. So technically, we could have put observation component code is pulse, and this is the value. And that looks quite a simple design for, it's in a single observation resource. And there is an existing example of uh, fire on international on APCA score with users component. The other option we looked into is related. Um, that we use observation.related. What it does allow is to create an external reference to observation which sits on its own and can be reusable. Um, for example, if we put observation here as a blood pressure or pulse, they sit external to this resource and referenced, and that way the blood pressure is a reusable component which can be used in other scenarios as well, and I think that's the way we are recommending it's designed. Uh, we have to choose a relationship type and we are um, recommending the user derived from, the news to score is derived from the blood pressure reading and pulse, and I think there are other um, kind of types available, but I think we think that's the best fit. So recommended option is two related, and I think the reason for that is the component according to the FIRE International should be only used when there's one method, one observation, one performer, one device at one time. So the only thing I can think which fits this definition is blood pressure, where you have systolic and diastolic blood pressure, and then you will use a component to say, uh, because systolic and diastolic is done by one performer at one time, uh, it would be good to use that. And related is used when the observation on its own has has different values, and again, because news to has six to seven components or six to seven parameters, which are used by different devices, could be the observation could happen at different times. So it makes sense to use related because that meets the criteria. The final link here is uh, a discussion forum for where we can get some international feedback. And I posted that question, whether use component or related. The response I got was related is the best recommended option. So we are proposing to use that. So before I go to vital signs, does anybody got any kind of comments on this uh, related or component, or everybody happy with that? Let me look at the chat window. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Amir. Okay, it seems I'm gonna take that, that everybody's happy with that proposal and move on. I don't think that's much controversial. Um, okay. Vital signs. Um, so we don't have a UK vital signs at the moment, and I think this is our opportunity to look into it. So one option is that we use a care connect observation level to generic and issue implementation guidance and say for respiration rate, for example, you can use this nomad code and you can use some units and that will, that will sit on a website. Now, or the option two is we create level two profile for each vital sign and we fix the codes and we constrained, uh, we call it level two because it's reusable. We've, we believe blood pressure puzzles and oxygen saturation will be reusable in multiple use cases, so we call it level two. 
the other considerations for this design that what the other consideration is that the the vital signs international to be conformant to it we actually have to create vital signs for these things because that's the way the international spec works um, and they also to be conformant we have to use loin codes which we don't use in uk so our recommendation is that as part of the alpha release we will provide snowmet ct codes for all observations like blood pressure and pulse but also like magic codes which will send along with it and the recommendation within the UK would be to not to use LOIC or ignore LOIC codes, but they will be in the message to be conformant. But we expect most of the semantic work will be done using SNOMED CT code and all the searching will work with SNOMED CT codes within the UK. And this is the point I made earlier in the call that all the parameters like blood pressure, they will be profiled as minimal viable products, like blood pressure will not have the cuff size and the position and all possible nodes for a blood pressure applies to other uh, parameters as well. Um, and we're not going to delete anything as per, as per our generic principle, the level two vital sign will inherit all the nodes and level two observations. So this is what it looks like in our proposal, the UK care connect observation level two. So first of all, we haven't got a level two of UK care connect. This is the first time we're gonna create one. Um, it will be based on a principle that level two will inherit um, everything from level from, from, from international. We'll be adding some UK specific extension for SNOMED CT, but apart from that, we're gonna keep it as close aligned to international pieces as possible. That will then create a UK care kind of vital signs. The vital signs is is a is a kind of a children of observation level two, and the main reason for vital sign is conformance. And then under that, we'll set blood pressure, respiration rate, oxygen saturation, pulse rate, and temperature. For news two, we also have to create ACPVU. I talked about new confusion, so this is your alert new confusion uh, patient response to pain, verbal or unresponsive. So we have a profile for that, and it is created as level two because we feel, again, it's a reusable component which can be used in, um, as an independent uh, ACPVU observation. Same with inspired oxygen is will give you whether this patient is on air, on oxygen. And remember, there's a score of zero and two. We have to profile it separately because the score is separate. We couldn't profile with oxygen saturation because the scoring then becomes complicated. And the final is the level two subscore is the one which I will describe a bit more when we come to discussion on how to carry subscores for news two. Uh, but I think the principle it is a reusable which allows us to carry subscore for um, any parameter. So I think that's the overall proposal for vitals. I'm going to stop here to get some uh, feedback if. Uh, if people have got comments on the vital signs proposal, we should have profiled it differently or made it differently. I'm interested to hear from suppliers um, who, who who would be implementing this. Let's start with Ben. Ben from Sona, do you have any view on that? Hi. Um, Hi. There's, um, the main we, we've already deployed uh, news two along with some other um, uh, early warning scores, the uh, pews and crews, and um, the 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 main uh, points I had at the moment was firstly in terms of we don't currently generate a sub score; we only have a total score, um, and was just to try and understand a bit more about why it was felt the sub-score was necessary to communicate. Um, the other aspects, the other main point was around currently in order to have an, rather than having a different profile for each type of early warning score in terms of the pediatric or respiratory or um, we currently have a collection of, we actually have a collection of four observations, um, which there's an early warning score total, 
um, a type which then um, so that uh, describes what whether it's a news or pews or um, and then we have a category in terms of green, amber, red as a as a collection of observations. And there's also actually a status observation which um, is based on whether it's a full or complete set of observations, which I haven't I I'm not uh fully up to speed with all the issues around that. Um but I was hoping to have another clinical lead on the on the call. Um but yeah, those are um, the uh, main points from 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 our perspective. Thanks, Ben. So I think from from subscore, the reason for including them is one: the RCP guidance is a certain subscores are three. Then there is a different intervention and course of monitoring prescribed. So. I think the, the subscores are clinically relevant on their own in some cases if they are going to extremes, and I think that was the reason for sending them. Um, apart from uh, or the, or, or the overall design we, we're looking at is, I think we need to look into how scalable it would be, as you're saying, for other subscores, other scores when they come along, and how many level threes we can have. But I think for, for needs to uh, that looked like quite a reasonable design to us, but I'm quite happy for your clinical lead to look into it and come back to us. Um, and did you have any comments from Orion on this? Yes, just wanted to pick up um, and discuss the category. Um, I'm assuming that it's a recursive structure, so that there is a category at the news level but there's also a category at the individual component level so there'll be a category for respiration rate category for oxygen yeah. saturation um you said you'd picked out the survey as the main one was that for the top level news category because i thought vital signs would be a more appropriate category for the component parts that make up the score no i think i meant the, the survey category only applies to means to level three um, all the vital science category would be actually to be conformant to the international specification has to be vital science. Okay. And um, the other thing was, I remember back in June this year, we, on a previous creation call, discussed category um, when we were discussing, I think as part of transfer of care, what observations might be carried. And the value set was, you got some feedback from vendors about which categories they use. For observations, I remember feeding back about half a dozen. Did you look at those when you made the decision to pick survey? Might there be one that's better? Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think I asked Dave if we could fish that out. We 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 we, we couldn't look at it, but I think we'll look at it again. Um, and and if that's got an impact, then uh, we can we can review it whether survey is the best option. Okay, that's all I had. Okay. Done. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think some lot of case I don't know. I know a few vendors, but John, your hand is still up. Oops. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, issues we came across is the representation of. Um, so we include subscores, um, but uh, the representation of um, the new score that, um, and uh, particularly some of the, the color coding that's part of the decision support we um, you know that uh, if we're going to calculate those those scores we're providing that decision support so we don't want to rely on the um, consuming system to have to implement additional business logic um, to then uh, calculate color or um, score again for example so the, the extension that we have added in is is to um, provide um, both image support and color support for those um, uh, for those um, scores coming through. Right. Okay. So are you saying, apart from sending subscore, you are actually sending the color scheme as well? Yeah. We've. Um, I believe. Uh, although. Uh, um, uh, our integration lead 
is on the call too, but um, I believe we've uh, we've implemented that through uh, supporting uh, sending a, a, a particular sort of image file through. But um, that that is incredibly important from a clinical perspective. That um, at uh, you know at quick glance they immediately see the um, severity of, of of the score. So it was a it was a must for us and our customers that we talked about when we were. Um, consuming um, this, this data through a, uh, a third-party system or, or, or a portal view that those colors were supported. Okay, thanks, that's helpful. Uh, we, can, we can consider that as a requirement internally if we, could, if we could meet in the first phase. Okay, so I'm gonna ask them some more suppliers. Uh, Matt from EMIS. All seems fine to me to be honest i think if like uh the preferred options i think two definitely suits it best uh, okay but yeah Thanks otherwise that. fine okay uh michael newland from ims oops yeah, that seems so good. Good. i think our, our use case is, is or one of our use cases has been slightly different um where we've been capturing what about you faint michael do you want to Project a bit. Sorry, uh, test of vital signs for from a third party into the EPR, um, and that would have included a new score, calculated new score. Um, but yeah, no, it seems fine from my perspective. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you, and Robert back with some vision. Hi, yeah, you can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you mentioned. Um, not including things like sort of posture and, and other sort of post yeah. of the names. Uh, is that is that definitely safe not to include that even as text or I mean, I'm, um, I'm a clinical person rather than a clinical person but um. I think we felt that it's not in news to score research with our CP guidance is not needed. We're not saying um, in future we want to include in future iteration of vital science we, we might depending on the requirement Right. Um, uh, we we might include it, but I think this is the alpha specification, so we want to uh, quickly come at the alpha specification and with the vitals and see if we can get some feedback from first type sites. And the feedback for certain things is that they they are recorded routinely. We might consider them, but there is no harm in sending in free text if you got them. I would I, I would say yes, of course, send them as free text. But uh, right now, all we're saying is we're not modeling them in the final resource yet. Right. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Will Jones, TXC. Will, we can't hear you. Okay. Uh, if you can't put any comments in the chat window. Um, any other comments from anybody else? Neil from London, Neil Robinson, any comments from your perspective? Aichi? No, I think the only one that I, I posted up, we haven't got to that point, was around the anatomy value set. Um, apart from that, no, it, it looks good. Okay, uh, thank you. We've got Amir. Hi, um, I think it was... Uh, John, was it John that was just talking earlier about the colour coding? Um, was that right, Munich? Was it John? Yeah, it was John. Right, so John, I'm interested that you picked up on uh, colour coding and clinical safety aspect of sharing. I didn't fully understand the structure, and I think I understood that you wanted to send a colour scheme with it. It'd be great if you could share that content on Riva because I think it's important that we heed the clinical safety aspect and make sure we haven't missed anything. So if you could add a bit more detail around that and what that extension was, just so that we can understand it's compatible with anything that you're designing or using, that would be really helpful. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We'll do that. Yeah, because I think... Um, if it's an extension, obviously, then it doesn't break your messaging or, you know, APIs, uh, and hopefully we can see where it might fit in with the design we're doing, because supporting implementers is, is 
as is important or those currently using system as getting a, a spec that is you know 100 percent foolproof you know we, we actually want this to work and be usable yeah um I, many of you will know manesh our um head of integrations but uh i'll, I'll have a chat with um manesh and we'll get those shared yeah that's very good, John. Also, just to do keep in mind that the color coding for news 2 has changed because based on feedback to deal with color blindness, it's no longer red, green, and uh, all those colors. They have changed the colors to uh, so that the people with color blindness could also see the colors. So I think that yeah. you might have to yeah. take that we've into just, account. We've, we've just released our, our news 2 um, API, so. We'll, we'll share that version. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, if there are no other comments or hands up, um, I'm going to move on. Okay. So we covered my tools, we covered observations. So now we are into the parameters code. So as we discussed that, the decision was made that not only we need to carry the total score, we need to carry subscores because they're clinically relevant. Um, there are a number of options carrying subscore. The basic design was that we could carry the subscore with the referenced observation itself. Uh, remember I showed you earlier that related to reference and observation, which goes to external, so that's what it would look like. It will news. this is the total news to observation profile, and it will have a reference to external blood pressure. So technically, the score could sit with blood pressure, or we could put the subscore of blood pressure with, with the news too. And I think what we're recommending is that the subscore sits with the news too because it belongs to news too. And the blood pressure is a reusable component which is referenced, and we don't capture the subscore of that blood pressure there. So I think that's the logic behind it. But even if we do that, that creates us a number of options, which is uh, why I put it on Rival as well. One is we carry the subscore as component in news two, which is empty in level three. Second is we create a nested reference using related. I have a diagram for it, so I'll explain a bit more that we actually carry uh, the subscore as a reference from news to level three, and then there's another reference from the subscore to the value. And option three is to create an extension and news two to carry the subscores. So let's look at these options in a bit more detail. So option one is carrying individual parameters as subscore is component. Uh, the problem is that we don't need extension. There is no nested reference. The point is that actually we don't get an explicit link between a subscore and value. So technically apart from um, saying that this is a blood pressure subscore synometer CT code and this is the blood pressure reading, there is no link in the message itself. Um, you could argue that that could be derived from a receiving system after if they are reliably able to pick those nomad CD codes and link them up, but that creates work for the receiving system to figure out which subscore belongs to which value. And so I think that's that's one of the reasons we are we're not recommending this option. This is option two which which I talked about the so called nested references. So we carry the total score in the news to level three, and then there's a reference uh, which goes to say, actually, this is the systolic subscore and its values two. From that, there's another reference to say, okay, this is the blood pressure, and the value is 100 millimeter of mercury. We're also recommending that this is a contained. It means that it is, it can't, the subscore cannot be read independently of reading the news to total score, so they are contained within a single. I think it has got some impact on RESTful API calls that, um, which I discussed with Dave, who could explain a bit more, that because it's contained, it would come back in a single call with all the subscores, and then you can retrieve, go retrieve the values in the next call. And finally, the third option is uh, the parameter scores, uh, which is that we create extension in the news subscore level three and have a code value pair. The code will carry the subscore of the pressure and the value would be two. So, but the issue is that's a new extension and the general 
principle is that we don't want to create extension in international profiles unless we have to. So based on that, we are recommending option two uh, for carrying subscores and linking them up, and that's the way it will look like. Uh, once again, open to the flow, um, any question or comments on these options or anybody's got um, different option for some reason, they think uh, they have recommendation. Um, okay, I'm going to start with Anne. Anne, Brian. Uh, can you come back to me? I'm still thinking about it. Oh, all right. Okay, I'll come back to you later, Ben. Um, I think, yeah, using the um, related, um, it seems fine in terms of. Uh, just to be aware, I think in release four, they've removed related and they've split it out into different components. So there's a, a derived from and a member of, and then everything, every other type of relationship is in extension. Um, the, 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 the only point is really would just be about um, uh, the requiredness of the subscores and the derived from references. Um, currently, they're, they're all optional at the moment. Ah, okay, yeah, so that's how it, because currently we're generating scores, uh, just total scores there, and um, uh, so they will be, they're available, and that there is no uh, references back to the, the signs that they were generated from um, or the component scores, but I think uh, if there's a structure there for populating them, and then that could be through implementation guidance that would be in, you know, later that they would, uh, uh, if it was felt that it was always necessary to to send the subscore along with the uh, reference to the derived vital sign. Um, but just having the the uh, total score enough would seem to be a kind of minimum uh, uh, minimum viable uh, useful component. Yeah, I think we discussed that. We don't want people stop people sending total score if that's what they want to send. But okay. again, yep. again, the design has got capability to send up scores and values if that's what you want to do. But I think again, our recommendation would be to send, um, you know, subscores and values as well. But do understand that this is kind of a roadmap kind of thing. So if people do yep. want to send just total score, that's fine. Um, okay. Any other comments from other suppliers? Um, this is Neil. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't put a hand up because I'm on an iPad. It's, uh, okay, it's Neil. Um, just in, in the comments that Anne was making about uh, automatic device loading. Um, does this, if we make it too complex, does it impose an unreasonable uh, task on automatic uploads from devices? Um, I don't know the answer, I'm just pushing it across. Uh, I guess Anne will know more. Okay. That, that question's really for the device manufacturers and their suppliers, but I can see the the value of having the total score point to the subscores, which then points to the individual parts, but I can also see it the other way around, where the total scores point directly to the parts, and the subscore is really only a property of the observation, the, the blood pressure or the pulse observation in that context. So um, that's why I'm still kind of tossing up in my mind which which is the better way to do it because if you didn't have that subscore or you made that subscore optional then it wouldn't impact on the device manufacturers as much. Okay, so you're saying reversing the order of having new students, but then it can't be contained because you want to because people might want to plot blood pressure. Uh, independent of news. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm kind of 50-50. I can see it works both ways. Yeah. So if we swap and have blood pressure, and then it won't be contained, and then a subscore out of it. Because... Um, <laughs> I 
Okay, Ian. Yeah, I just I, I think in principle I, I, I agree with well, probably both Anne and, and Ben that we do, we don't want to put too many constraints here. I mean, obviously the news two score is the one thing that we definitely want to want to move. But I can see all sorts of circumstances where people might want to just have the base observations, might want the sub scores, might want both. I don't think we should. However, we design it. I don't think we should impose any particular dependencies. Um, you know, so that we can mix and match these things depending on the exact use case and and, and the local business requirements. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Ian. Uh, Mike. Mike Fisher. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to uh, put out a bit of a plea, really, to the um, to the suppliers that are on the call that um, I, I think it's it's absolutely right that we should have a structure that doesn't absolutely mandate subscores. But given that in order to calculate the news two value in the first place, the system that originates the data must know what the firstly what the original observations were and secondly what the subscore that derived from that was. It is really useful from a clinical point of view to know why somebody's news two or news has, has gone off. Um, so, you know, I, I think if uh, if there wasn't a really, really solid reason why it couldn't be implemented to include the subscores in any message, whatever the exact format of that message is that we settle on, um, could I just put out a plea that people seriously consider that they, if they're going to share this data with an external system, to um, include the subscores as well if they possibly can. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Um, Mark? Hi, Manish. Um, Hi. We, we got to option three in our design because we I think, echoing another point, we want to graph blood pressure separately on occasion. Um, so, so, therefore, we've, we've been considering adding an extension to, to record the, you know, the, the, the new score of the component values. There is uh, to do it as container resource, I think would be difficult. I'm not quite sure I understand option two entirely yet. So we get to to see some examples there, but on, on, on river if possible. Um, but um, we've been implementing. We we have to get um, a new score and all uh, components resources back in one go simply by using um, the the include parameter on our um, on our API call. So I think, think there's a way of doing, you know, getting all that information back in, in one go without resorting to, to having contained resources. Okay, thanks. Um, can I bring Dave Barnett in? Dave, do you want to respond to that? Um, yeah, so I, I've, I've exchanged email addresses with Mark anyway, so <laughs> we'll, we'll probably take it offline. Um, I guess we've gone for this design um, so far because um, the subscores are wholly contained within the, the the overall score that they they actually relate to, which which doesn't really address Anne's point that you might want to chart subscores in their own right. Um, I think it's worth exploring whether that that's a requirement or not. Um, and and I think it, it's a good design to have the actual observations um, separate, so they can be used for other purposes and referenced by other uh, assessment scales or, or other other designs that, 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 that might be going off within the system. Um. Okay. Um, I just wanted to get feedback from other suppliers on option two. So um, would, who's, would Matt, Matt, do you have a view on this? I think you're posted on Rywater anyway, but you prefer option two, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think for me, it's just the way the data would be held, sort of from a well, from a selfish perspective, in English web, it kind of represents the best way that we'd store the data for kind of calculation. So, okay, thank you, uh, Michael Nolan. Hi, sorry. Um, that kind of makes sense sense to me. I think um, where we've been coming from is that we've been um, providing a a set of vital signs um, observations and including the scores it, 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 as part of, the, of that. Um, 
So it's kind of, I suppose, what, what we've done so, looked at, implemented so far has been more in line with option two, three, but uh, this option two doesn't seem to make a perfect sense as well to me. So long as we can keep the, um, you know, the, the vital signs, the actual blood pressures, etc., separate and kind of reference those. Okay. Okay. Um, I got a hand up from Robin Deslin. Yeah, I was just I was just thinking if you can, if you force suppliers to uh, to fill in every data field that, that in a connected structure, then in reality there might be workflows or information flows where a supplier is only providing one part of the chain of information. So they'll inevitably end up filling in a null value in the bits that they can't fill in. So I think you have to leave it um, free that they can fill in, um, you know, what they know how to fill in and, and not make it uh, mandatory. So, so these are optional elements. I think the issue we got is that if the subscore is optional and it's not included, because we have linked the actual reading to the subscore now, if you don't include the subscore and you do want to include the reading, that, that's not possible in the current design. Yeah. Um, I'm, so I'm, think, agree, I'm agreeing with that. I think, it's, I think it's the right way to go. But I'm explaining the reason not to, not to mandate it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Robert, back with revision. Yeah, I'm not sure whether uh, a GP system would ever receive one of these or not. I'm, as I say, I'm more technical and clinical. Um, so I don't know whether we, we would ever handle these or not. Um, in general, I mean, hierarchies can be a bit brittle going forwards. Um, generally, try and avoid hierarchies and have sort of uh, other sorts of links between things as a bit flexible. Um, and presumably, if you're exporting a, a care record, these blood pressures and, and other um, subscores would, would exist at the same level as in these, in these two score as well. So you'd kind of be duplicating these if you're you know, exporting a wider record. Um, whether that's a, I don't know how many new two scores you'd get for a patient in, a, in these settings. I understand is it a daily thing or not? Um, so. Okay. Generally prefer the sort of freer non-hierarchical approaches, but uh, equally I'm, I'm less aware of the uh, the world where these are actually being used day to day. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Will Will Jones. Hi, sorry, sorry, I wasn't uh, around before. Um, to do. Um, right, I think for this new score, I think option two is what I would agree with uh, for the following reasons: those sub scores are linked components to the overall U2 score and really they can't be separated out. If you start separating them out, those become meaningless and they might become a bit of an issue clinically. If you, for example, split them out to in a stream for um, oxygen um, observations and link them to the oxygen observation, that would make that subscore meaningless. So it has to be linked to the overall U2 score. Okay, thank you. So you so you're happy with option two then? Yeah, that's the preferred option. Okay, thank you. So I've got a few more hands up. Um, Amir. Yeah, I was just responding, a colleague, a GP colleague earlier about G, you know GPs sending and receiving. I think in the first instance, um, the workflow component is quite complex for us, and we probably wouldn't be um, interested in receiving. The, the news as a key component to help us manage our patients, but um, but I can imagine the subcomponents like the vital signs aspects over a period of time um, being helpful. So I think those related components that are help, helpful here that we're developing in terms of us create you know scoring a patient and part of an admission process. I, I could imagine as we become more interoperable and we start communicating between systems, then yeah, I can see us collating the data. I've got a patient in front of me doing that score and then we've got a connection to a local department and we send it through that way. But I guess that integrated care system workflow, that part feels a long way off for me. So that, that was just going to be my feedback from a, a jobbing GP working with patients. 
Oh, thanks, Amir. It's interesting that RCP report does mention primary care, but I think I, uh, my current understanding is not used in primary care much. Um, but I think. I mean, it's on our sheets for when uh, when I do visits with patients on our paper sheets. It's on there. We score patients. It you know it helps us from making a decision. But you know, being visiting a patient versus actually having them in our consulting room where the when the computer's accessible, it, this is slightly different paradigms and workflows. I can imagine it being used, but then at the same time, we've got to target other workflows that are implementable today. Because as Ben has mentioned, you know, ST4, ST5, all these other aspects may trump us when GP implement this for a workflow, but there are other use cases that need these solutions today. Okay, thanks. Ben? Ben, we can't hear you. Are you double muted? Sorry, yeah, I was double muted. Um, just a point in terms of this option two um, and the related reference, whether it's contained or just the reference, um, I would, I think the preference would be on leaving that as optional as to whether it was contained or not, or whether it was just a reference and not, so as well as it being optional to have the subscore, also, if you want to show the subscore, it can just be a simple reference, or you could have it as a contained reference, um, but not requiring it to be a, a contained uh, reference. Yeah, I think we had discussion on that as well, because technically um, there, there's a requirement, and there might be clinical requirement to plot the subscores um, over, over a period of time. And if we make them contained, you actually can't plot them because they are part of news too, and you can't kind of independently pick them up and plot them. Uh, and that is something we will have to look into. So yeah, I think that's that's a reasonable suggestion that whether they are, um, whether do, we, we don't have to make it required for them to be contained. Um, and, right. sorry Ben, did you, did you have further comment? No, oh, that was all. Yeah, thanks. Anne? I've just been looking at the one of the implementations that we have of the new form and when we're talking about carrying the subscores and um, not requiring the consuming system to you know derive all the business logic to work out what to do and how to escalate them it just occurred to me that sometimes our new forms actually say almost have some actions um, or some comments that say what the supposed escalation should be. So the clinical decision support aspect is baked into what gets carried as well. And I wondered whether you had considered that or if there's space for that under comments or observation at high level observation. So for example, one of ours says send a notification to the clinical care outreach team and the other one sends as a clinical response team. And then you, you make some free text comments about what you want to tell that team. So I would to the total score overall. Yeah, I mean, so I think the observation has got a comment field anyway, so I think that could be used that, but we haven't actively recommended, but we could, I think we should, in our implementation guidance to say, use the comment field to carry any kind of further actions or any, any note you want to send. Um, I think that would make sense. Otherwise, what Ian, you ask is losing data along the way. But if yeah. the, the system that generated it has told you what should happen, what the escalation process should be, but the sending receive, the receiving system doesn't receive that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's important. Thanks, um, Ian. Hi, uh, just just for completeness, I I argued uh, unsuccessfully, clearly in a minority for option one to use the the internal observation components to carry the subscores. Um, I just th still think that's a more elegant way of doing it. It keeps that bit of knowledge together within one profile, keeps the data together because, as, um, as somebody said earlier, I can't remember who it was. Uh, 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 anyway, it keeps that data together. Um, it just seems to me a better way of working, but I, I clearly other people feel otherwise. I just thought I'd point that out in case I, I get any hidden supporters. 
<laughs> okay, we'll see if you get any hidden supporters again. Uh, ben? Uh, no. Okay, your hand is up from previous time. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, have I missed anybody? Is there any other supplier who want to come in in support of Ian or option two or option three at this point? No? Okay, we'll move on. So I think what we're going to look into, we're going to still assume is option two because there's still quite quite a bit of support for it. Um, we will look into the ordering of those references and whether they are contained or not. And I would recommend we carry on discussion on driver. Uh, there's already thread on news to feedback. And I think I would uh, recommend everybody to kind of keep the conversation live there after this call. If you kind of have further insight after going back to your technical team or, or your clinical teams, either way. And uh, and if you let us know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that in our design. Okay, so I'm going to move on to um, the related observation. I think there's not going to be much discussion. Most of them are quite simple, um, which is a code value pair desperation rate right? because we are not adding any additional attributes at the moment. Um, then oxygen saturation is a little bit complicated, um, but I think what we are saying is we're going to provide three SNOMED code, you can send the oxygen saturation, but you can send that on air or, or supplemental oxygen. Um, also discuss on the air on oxygen is a separate care connect level two, and a score would be sent separately as part of inspired oxygen level two. Again, scale one and scale two will have SNOMED CT codes. We already have pre-release codes, um, and those will be used to differentiate within the scale one and scale two sub-score um, and, you know, at this point, we are not saying that we'll be sending any related observation that this patient has got hypercapnic respiratory failure. Neither will be sending any kind of information about that the current oxygen flow rate of this patient is X or the inhaled device is this, because technically all these things could be sent, but um, for calculating use two score as such, all we need to know is scale one and scale two and their subscores, um, and all that information is more of a decision information which might be used on deciding which scale was to be used. So that's the oxygen saturation. Um, so blood pressure is quite simple. Uh, we said it will have two components. It will use the component part of the observation to capture systolic and diastolic blood pressure. It will use the snow at codes and a unit, and once again, it won't have any other additional observation of the patient position of the cuff size. Again, observation, um, heart rate is quite simple with a code value pair. And then we have ACVPU profile, which will have a code for ACPVU to say this is ACPVU scale in the observation dot code and number of these values. Uh, which includes new confusion as per the guidance. And then it will link to a score, which will give you score zero for alert and three for everything else. Uh, temperature is again straightforward, code value pair, and we're not adding any adding further kind of nodes to it at the moment. Inspired oxygen, as we discussed, will have two codes. The patient is breathing in room air or patient on oxygen and based on, based on that with a code of zero or two. Um, that's it really in terms of our news to proposal and design. Do people have any further comments on individual observations? Would, would they want them uh, anything further added to them or do they think that's all right for the basic design? Kevin? Hi, um, just a quick question. Um, there were a couple of codes missing there. If you go back to this, back to um, go back one screen and another one. Um, there, we're missing the top level codes for a number of these. So if we go to the oxygen one, which I think was the next one. Yeah. Um, we've got the value codes there, um, but we need the parent code as well. Um, so they, so are, could, they, they will be all generated as part of the release, so we have a spreadsheet with all the codes. So okay. once 
once we do the alpha spec, which is expected to come out next week, actually, so you will have all the parent codes and the value codes and with the implementation guidance where the parent code would go and where the value code would go. I think these slides are more indicative to say this is the overall okay. high-level design, um, the complete list of codes we have, which we'll publish as part of alpha. Is the code for news too, I presume that being yes. prepared as well? Okay, that's yes. fine. But just do keep in mind that I'm, I'm sure uh, our terminologists, Jeremy and Andrew, would want me to mention that they are pre-release Nomad code, so um, they will be actually released in April 2019, so they are subject to change, but we have some pre-release codes to keep us going for at least first of type testing. Uh, Mike? Okay, that's, that's fine. Um, I just wanted uh, to see what people thought about something, really. If you... Um, it, it, I think in two screens time, if you just move on, uh, there are obs there's a observation. Um, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, uh, yes, this one. We've got um, an observation as to whether the person is on inspired oxygen or not. But actually, if we're using the codes for the oxygen saturation on room air or the oxygen saturation on supplemental oxygen, then this information is actually technically redundant. Um, and obviously there is, I mean, I know it's not big, but there is a small overhead both in terms of implementation and in terms of um, consuming bandwidth for essentially take, transmitting the same information twice. I just wondered what people thought about that and if they thought that we could actually dispense with what's on this screen here because it can be inferred from the code as to whether whether the um, oxygen saturation was derived from breathing air or breathing oxygen. Okay, so I think just before I, I bring other people in, the, the logic of having this was that because they have separate scores on zero and two, um, if we did build them in, in the patient and the oxygen saturation itself, then we've got two subscores combined in one when, when sending it to the receiving system, because if the overall score is four, then there'll be two based on patient is breathing on oxygen and two based on the oxygen saturation. Um, and the reason for separating them was to uh, we are able to comply with our pattern of having separate subscore and, and related observation by having them separately. Um, and in cases people use that code for, you know, patient oxygen saturation on oxygen, that does create a duplication. But I think we we have them separate to be crystal clear that this two score is coming because it's patient on oxygen. And if we do combine them and the sending system would have to put a business logic and do a calculation in before sending the message. So that will be overhead. But I'm quite happy to um, hear from other um, suppliers. So, Anne? Yeah, I would, I would support the way that it's defined there as a separate observation. That's the way that it's presented to our users on screen. They have to check a box to say, is the patient on air, yes or no? And then from that, we would infer what the correct SNOMED terms are to put into the shared data set. Okay, thank you. Ben? Ben, are you double muted again? Onto you. Hi, sorry, yep. Um, it was just to make the point I made earlier about um, currently the way we've uh, approached this is that we have a, a single early warning or early warning score total observation, oh. and then that paired along with a uh, early warning score type observation. Um, that then determines whether it's a news to or cruise or pews or um, muse, so all the, the maternal, respiratory, or pediatric. Um, so I'll, I'll post um, more, um, and there's also a, a category observation which does the green, amber, red, or whatever the colors are going to be, although I think 
that could be derived from the numeric, but in terms of whether there was an option to communicate that as well. I mean, the, the main point was really, I'll, I'll post more details about the current approach we have in terms of having a, a single early warning score total paired with a type. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, the, the, uh, the other approach would be to have four different early warning score um, profile, total profiles, you know, having a different profile for each um, maternity, pediatric. Um, so I uh, just wanted to get other thoughts on that and whether within the scope of your work package was to uh, factor in the, the pediatric, maternal and respiratory stuff. So, so the current scope is just news too, but I'm happy to, because of our general principle is that we design in a generic way that we are, you know, we, we, we want to meet as many use cases as possible and we want to be future proof. Um, and if you post us the detail, Ben, I mean, one of the options might be we create a generic level two sub-score or scoring system and then news two becomes a child yeah. of that as a level three and the level two becomes a assessment scoring level two, which can do any assessment with a score. And and then we can kind of use that model if, if it works. But yeah, if you post us what you yeah, got, I'll send, and then- I'll send more details. I just wanted to uh, raise it now, just in case any uh, thoughts or discussions from others on, but uh, I'll post the, the detail about it. Yeah, okay, thanks. Ian? I, I guess I guess just related to that, you know, is it worth asking if news, at least the total score should be in, uh, you know, in along with that, given that, you know, news two is still very new and I think people are still rolling out news itself, you know, are, are we, is it worth just p popping that in since we're here already? Uh, okay. Well, yeah, I think technically it's very easy to do. We will just write an existing news code, which we have. That's not the issue. Um, but I think it's because the whole overall design is configured for news to including SP1 and SPO2 and confusion. My, my only concern is that if you do all that and then um, you end up sending news that, that might confuse, I would rather design news with its components and get rid of SP1, O2, and confusion and all that. So there, there are the factors, I think, about just switching the code there. So that's the reason I'm, I'm a bit reluctant, um, but happy to. Yeah, it's only, in the, it's only in the context, I mean, Ben's right, you know, there are a bunch of variants out there, um, you know, Mews and Pews and goodness knows what else. And if, if we are gonna have a look at that, you know, is it an opportunity just to say, like, realistically, you know, are people still going to be using news for three or four years? If so, then you know it might be worth considering it. I think it'd be good to get some feedback from implementers about what the reality is on the ground. Uh, okay, yeah, so happy for people to come back to us on that. Well, I'm, I'm sure Jan and RCP hopes that's not the case um, because News 2 was released last year, but um, I acknowledge the reality on the ground might be different. And Oh, you got your hand down, so you don't know for the comment. Kevin? Oh, sorry, sorry. You do. I was talking in on mute. I just wanted to come back to something you said right at the start around LOINC and that being the international preferred coding system versus SNOMED, which is what you've shown us here. Is the intention that you will specify the LOINC code? Well, the LOINC is already specified by HSO and International, so we don't have to specify them. We'll just pick what they got. Um, on the international link magic value and in international and just put snowmet goes next to it but we don't have to specify logic uh, yeah. link magic values because they're already specified by by international but not all the ones that you've got there are on that list from what i can see so the one about whether they're on air or not is not and there is no magic value for that no because that's not a vital sign according to international Link. We only have to conform to what they classify as vital signs, which are very specific things. And because that's the reason in the table, um, ECP is not a child of vital sign because 
actually it's we don't have to make this as a vital sign and we don't think it is um so that's the reason we don't have to provide law inputs of any of these does that answer your question i think it does it just it just it's consistent obviously with the us core but i don't see the point of it for the uk because we're not going to be using well, I think it's, they haven't given them much of an option, to be honest. Right. It's, not, it's not US core, it's the, it's the base fire specification. So the vital signs profiles, it's not part of US core. They were originally in DSU 2 um, defined in Argonaut, but in SU 3 they're now part of the base profile specification. So yeah, we investigated that, and we would love to dispense law in code, but we can't because to be conformant to the base STU3, we have to use them. Well, we only have to use 13 log codes. Yeah, I guess my point was more just when you distribute the slides out, if you could make sure that those log codes are copied from the fire stick into them, so you can see them side by side yeah. and there's just less chance that someone will go to the spec and get the wrong one. Okay. Yeah, I can include them in the slide pack in, in, in the appendix or the final slide to line codes. But I think they will be part of the profiles which we'll release next week and, and the alpha specification anyway. Uh, but quite happy to publish in slides if that's helpful. Okay. Um, any other comments from anybody else? at this point because I think we are pretty much at the end of the presentation and the only bit I want to say is um, if you are one of the suppliers who are early implementers or you're one of the sites of first of type or, or as a supplier you know a site which would, would want to be first of type site, uh, please do come back to us because once we release Alpha next week, the intention is to um, really test in a real environment if we could um, and get some feedback and publish a beta. So if if you got any, please do contact me or post on driver, and uh, would would also like to include you in the upcoming meetings of core team, which are a couple next week, to just to go through the alpha spec and the clinical safety parts. Um, but if you are one of the first supply sites or supplier, um, we encourage you to contact us. And that's that from me really for this presentation, unless. Um, anybody else has got any other comments in any other business at this point? Uh, anything in the chat window? Uh, okay. I think I've got nothing. So if, if there are no other comments, thanks for joining this call. Please carry on the conversation on driver and I'll pick them up and I'll respond as soon as I can. And have a good weekend and thank you very much. Bye now. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. Thank you.